and and the question is what's the point of making these objects you see because there's a perfectly good way of making them you can write you can write the definition down on a blackboard or in a pdf you know or in a math in a maths book and uh and then you know you can you can use these you know you can give the books to other people and uh, they can read your books and they can understand your ideas we have a perfectly good way of communicating mathematics uh but lean's maths right maths Mathematicians find it quite good fun. I mean, I, d I don't know if this came across, but I actually find it a whole lot of fun uh, making, you know, giving birth to numbers again and again like this. You know, I've, I've done this many times now and, uh, and giving birth to many other mathematical objects as well. And other people have become interested. Other mathematicians have become interested and they started making the kind of things they use in their research. So within four years, we've gone from no code to half a million lines of code. We have this gigantic maths library and uh, we've been concentrating for the most part on the kind of things we teach a pure mathematician in an undergraduate degree, which is, you know, which can be broadly classed, you know, sort of analysis and algebra, analysis and algebra, you know, the discrete and the continuous. Uh, and so we have essentially all the algebra that they learn and we have maybe half the analysis, but give us another couple of years and we'll have all the analysis. And then you can argue at that point. And then by that point, the system we have and other systems are already essentially at this state. Uh, the system we have will be able to understand the questions that we ask the undergraduates in order to get them to graduate. Uh, it, you know, we, we'll be able to type the exam questions into the system and the system will be able to say, yes, I understand that this is, you know, a question that can be worked on. Uh, and, you know, of course, another question is, can we train the computer to prove these things? I mean, I'll get to that. Actually, I lied. This is my last but one slide. Uh, but, uh, you know, we have half the analysis as an undergraduate degree, but we have all the algebra. And the algebra, for example, me, uh, are interested in pushing things much further. So we now move to this kind of MSc level algebra and, and much more, you know, we have some modern research level algebra in these systems. And, uh, and other theorem provers, they have other bits as well. You know, there's other theorem provers have much more analysis, for example, Isabel Hall, has much more analysis. And there are some highly non-trivial pieces of algebra in the system COP. So, uh, you know, these, these, are, these are really the three main systems for, uh, for sort of serious modern mathematics. So, sorry, this is my last slide. Uh, so really, I'll, yeah, I just want to finish by saying, what's the point of training a computer to do mathematics? Well, the, f the first thing is they're more accurate than humans. You know, there's plenty of mistakes in the mathematical literature, but there's no mistakes in our half a million lines of maths library. Uh, because, I mean, for technical reasons, but one can one can check, you know, one can get independent systems to verify that our system is correct. So th these things are much more accurate than e independently. They're much more accurate than humans, basically, because they they don't, you know, we don't see them as making mistakes, whereas humans make mistakes everywhere. But they're also more autistic. They're less capable of thinking for themselves. They have some primitive AIs, but uh, they're not. They're not quite there yet doing their own research, but I can imagine using them for, for undergraduate and also sort of PhD level teaching. You know, once they once they become large databases of known facts, then you can start querying these databases and uh, and asking what is known. You know, is this is this theorem known? Uh, and you you might get an answer. Yes, it's known, and furthermore, it's in my database. Or you might get an answer. Yes, this has been claimed by humans, and the reference is this paper here. So if you start, you know, telling it the things that we believe, uh, then you can start getting very, you know, once it knows all the, once it knows all the definitions we know, you can start stating the theorems we know and, uh, and not proving them. And then we'll, you know, envisage rather rapid progress. But of course, what we ideally want to get these systems to is the point where they start proving mathematical theorems on their own. Uh, that hasn't happened yet. Uh, but one of the reasons it hasn't happened is that some, some AIs like to be trained on a database. And it's only recently that these databases have started getting very large and becoming somehow appropriate for these kinds of questions. So will they start proving theorems on their own? I mean, some computer scientists are absolutely convinced that this is the future of mathematics and uh, that people like me, pure mathematicians, are going to be out of a job soon because, you know, the thing we add our art uh, you know, the, the idea of, you know, trying to prove a theorem by going in a certain direction or trying to prove a theorem by creating a certain new tool. Uh, it, people, people are arguing that computers will be able to start learning to make these tools automatically and learning to prove theorems automatically. And, uh, and if that happened, I mean, people worry about computers 
you know, putting vast, vast, um, vast members, you know, huge numbers of members of the population out of a job. But actually, I think that if I'm working on this kind of thing, I might end up in some sense putting myself out of a job. But one, one would find it very hard to argue that this isn't some kind of progress uh, because then computers and humans will be able to start working together uh, to push mathematics further.